Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Coffee with Dante. I'm your host, uh, Dante. And uh, today there was a really interesting topic that I wanted to talk about. It was actually during our podcast that we usually have docking station. Uh, I was talking with Arthur about it a little bit, and I wanted to do a video on the concept of introducing a character. Um, especially, this is mainly pertaining to comic book heroes, but this could also pertain to big franchises. Uh, and just pretty much any general franchise that has, or any any uh, any kind of universe that has pre-existing content. So that can be books, that could be other movies, that could be video games, music, whatever. Um, so pretty much that ha something that has a history. Uh, so again, I'm just gonna, for lamest terms, I'm just gonna dub them as franchises and universes. I'll probably use the two interming, you know, intermittently, but it pretty much means the same thing. And so. Uh, with the rise of reboots and the rise of trilogies and quadrilogies and sequels after sequels and obviously with the expanded Marvel Universe as well as DC trying to do their own thing there's a lot of things uh, th there's a lot of concepts that seem to get kind of pushed out and um, there, there are a bunch of examples of how not to do it and how to do it and so today I just kind of wanted to go over like a great way to introduce a character that people know. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get into it. Introduce a character we know! So introduce a character that we know. So let's take the example of Superman. Okay, so we're going to take an example that didn't work. Uh, everybody when they view Superman, they know Golden Age Superman. I mean, he's the guy that saves Lois Lane. He saves puppies and kittens from trees. I mean, he's just an all-around guy. He doesn't kill anybody. I mean, he is the epitome of what humanity is supposed to be or whatever. So he's like, he's like super Jesus. Um, but one thing that, uh, again, a lot of the recent interpretations, especially from Zack Snyder, have been kind of subpar. Now, the reason why is there's a multitude of reasons. But I think a lot, a lot of the complaints that a lot of fans of Superman have had, uh, especially comic book fans, and, and myself included, because I love Superman, is that they introduced the character poorly. Um, one of the big problems with Man of Steel was that it introduced modern Superman. Now, a lot of people don't know modern Superman. Modern Superman's a guy that kills. Now, it's very, very rare. He tries not to kill. But it's during these incidences, like these really extreme cases where he will kill. So on, one example is Doomsday. Uh, he does kill Doomsday. Uh, he <laughs> doesn't try to save Doomsday. They literally go punch to punch until one. Of, they both get exhausted, pretty much die on their own, and then you find out that Superman gets revived. So you kind of know that whole shtick. But the point being is that Superman kills Doomsday. I mean, he just does, and Doomsday sort of kills Superman. Um, he also, there's a, there's a couple other heroes and I'm just kind of, I'm looking at a list right now. Uh, there's, there's one where he goes into an alternate universe and he uses like the phantom zoners version of kryptonite and he kills like a bunch of them because they're waging war on earth. Uh, <laughs> there's some like really obscure, uh, incidences where good guy Superman kills people. Uh, he kills like a, an evil version of himself. Even a Superboy prime kills. So, modern Superman does kill. This is Silver Age, Bronze, especially Bronze Age Superman. And this is a Superman people aren't familiar with. We're familiar with something called Earth-1 Superman, which is your goody two-shoes, you know, saves kittens from trees, never kills anybody. And if he does kill somebody, he's not really killing them. He's sending them to the Phantom Zone, which might be worse, actually, than death. <laughs> the problem was, you could tell that they didn't, that Zack Snyder and the writers didn't understand Superman. They only read some of the modern comic books and they didn't go through the development process that Superman goes through. Um, Superman does not kill. And there's a... Uh, originally. And there's a couple struggles and a couple moments where he actually has to go through that. And so we're going to get into the next topic. So after introducing a character... Bring the darker nature out! So after introducing a character that audiences know, then that's when you can really start to dive in into the newest, latest iteration of the character. And what I mean by that 
is the reason why Batman works as a dark character is because people know Batman is a dark character. He's been dark since like the 70s uh, and 80s. Not the 60s, because we're not going to count uh, campy Batman. Again, going back to the example of Superman, um, he was a character that was very lighthearted. He was a good guy, never killed. And that's the character people knew. And so, introduce that character, and then that's when you have your, your sequel. Uh, and the sequel is really where you start to build the character and really start to show a lot of different shades and, and show the characteristics that make that character unique. Uh, and that's where you can get into the topic of a darker Superman because you kind of have to ease people into it. It's kind of a system shock when people look at a symbol and they think they've known it all their life and it turns out that this interpretation that they see on the screen or in books or whatever is just not what, they, what they've seen. And now I'm all for shakeups, but most people are not. And a lot of people hate it because it's a massive change from what they know. And so it's important to ease us into the dark concepts. I think a great example actually is uh, Captain America. So Captain America is kind of like the Marvel version of Superman. If you think about it, he's not invincible, no. But he has the same, you know, Boy Scout characteristics of Superman. And the way that they introduced him is he, they introduced Captain America in the first movie as this goody two-shoes Boy Scout fighting Nazis. Simple, straightforward, people kind of knew what they were expecting, and it was a great movie. I loved, and personally, on a, on a personal note with that movie, I really enjoyed the atmosphere that they kind of created. They had a warm glow to it, so it even felt like it was filmed back in the day. Like, you could tell. Like, it just felt like an older movie. Then, uh, when Captain America Winter Soldier came out, they introduced some of the darker concepts, and some of the concepts that are implemented in the new Captain America. And that's and then that's arguably one of the best comic book movies ever made. And why was that successful? It's because we saw Captain, we saw the Cap grow up. And we saw the character flesh out and be put into situations where we didn't know how he was going to react. We, I mean, this is, this is the part where the character grows. We get to see it. We get to be part of it. And it's an experience. And that's how it works. It's like being thrown, going on a roller coaster ride and being thrown in that same cart was some stranger and you don't know the stranger but they're do you know they're just kind of weird they got like a snaggle tooth and they're looking at you weird and you're looking at them weird and it's just this whole awkward conversation rather than going into that same roller coaster ride and you're with the person you know uh, and you get to see that reaction of when they hit the climaxes and go down you know you you get to grow with that person and have a cool experience and you don't really have much of an experience with a stranger. Uh, not all the time. I'm not saying it's not possible. But, you know, a guy that looks like he's kind of off-putting versus you, you know, they are both kind of off-putting one another, it's not going to be a good experience. And that's, that's kind of what happened with um, Superman. Uh, Man of Steel, I should say. Uh, and um, let's get to the next one. I think this one's pretty important. Striking a balance between the version we know and the version we see. Uh, there's two franchises that have failed to execute this, uh, but there's one. One of the two is actually able to save itself, and I am looking forward to that. Uh, so I'm going to start off with Transformers. So the reason Transformers does not work is because we, a lot of the audience members, the only thing that they know is most likely going to be the toys. They're going to know, oh, these toys transform. They might know. I know for me as a kid. The only uh, introduction to Transformers I had was Beast Wars, but there's a lot of people out there that had kind of the 80s cartoon uh, introduction, 70s, 80s cartoon of uh, the Transformers, and that's what they're used to. And it's, you know, I mean, they had dark concepts, but overall it's pretty lighthearted. A lot of those early cartoon shows were pretty lighthearted, those early 80s shows and whatever. And so when you introduce the Transformers, like Michael Bay's Transformers, uh, well, he tried. To, he did a bad job at striking a balance. Now, while we didn't completely know the Transformers, so it did leave a little room for creativity. The problem was he tried to strike a balance between making it dark, especially when Jazz was getting ripped in half, versus kind of funny, where you remember Robot Balls in the sequel, and man, that was terrible. So. Striking a balance is important because we need to know that we have a character that we know 
and we have a character that we can see a realistic progression in. If we don't have that, then you're going to have a character that I'm not going to give a crap about. I'm going to walk out of the movie and say it was terrible because the character that I've been watching this whole time, I just, there was, it was lost translation for me. It just didn't feel natural and fluid. Um, now, the second uh, franchise I actually want to talk about, Striking a Balance, and I think this movie might actually work out. Um, which is Team and T. So, Team and T, the original new Michael Bay movie or Michael Bay produced movie, was pretty bad. Um, I love my turtles, and yes, I did grow up with the cartoons, although it was near the end of the 80s and I was still a mere lad. Uh, my cousin was really into it, and I watched some of the VHSs that he provided, and I loved it. I loved, I, I mean, I got a little bit of an introduction to the Ninja Turtles. Now, as a fa as a matter of fact, you know, I'm not going to know, I'm not going to have as much as a stake in the TMNT as maybe my cousin does, but I have a little bit of a stake, and I, I recognize the characters. I recognize, you know, Donatella, Michelangelo, Leonardo, and, uh, Raphael, did I ever say him? The four turtles, they eat pizza, they kick ninja butt, Shredder's fucking cool, but he's an asshole, and Krang is a thing. Um, and that's that's all I knew, but it was it was fun and playful. It was a it was a cool TV series, and they just I felt like they never managed to capture the same magic that that had because everyone loves that version. Um, I think they they reintroduced the turtles with more of a darker edge to it. Closer to the original comic book. So what... Uh, the original creation of the Ninja Turtles is actually pretty dark. Uh, they were pretty much genetically made to kill Shredder. That was their purpose of training with this rat. If you look at it, it's like sinister drawings. I mean, compared to what we're used to. And so the reason why the Michael Bay translation didn't work is because he was trying to have the 80s look to it, but then also go for that dark tone that people aren't used to. You can't do that. You need to introduce the characters, and then in the next movie, that's when you can start slowly introducing the concepts that define the characters, that make them even more so. Um, and that's why I think this soft reboot, where's Strike of the Shadows or whatever, I'm gonna, I'll just put an image up of what the new name is called, but I think the reason why this reboot could work is because, well, for one, they got a new director. And he's like, yo, let's get back to what people know before we start introducing new ideas. And so with the opening trailer, we get to see, you know, we get to see the, the turtle mobile. We get to see them firing like these manhole covers. We get to see uh, Rocksteady and Bebop, which was a huge thing. Uh, and we actually get to see a shredder, like shredder, shredder, like something that people are used to. And so they're getting back to what made Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fun and exciting. Now, does that work with every character? Hell no. Uh, there's a lot of characters that need to be introduced dark, like Batman. Batman is a dark character that appropriately can be introduced as a dark character. Uh, Team NT, people know the lighthearted version. You need to go with the lighthearted version, especially with the 80s movies, with the cartoon series, even their little concert run. You have to introduce them that way. Uh, and that's actually part of the reason why I think that Power Rangers is not going to work out. They're trying to make it dark. They're trying to also, they're doing a bad job at balancing it. And I can already see that this is going to be pretty bad. It's going to be pretty bad. And that was something I actually did grow up with. Red Ranger. But um, to kind of wrap it all up, there is a, uh, there's two things I want. There's one concept that you can take away from home. And it actually, it's my kind of understanding of a bigger concept. So Harmon storytelling. So Dan Harmon, a lot of people know Dan Harmon. He is the creator of community, Rick and Morty. He's done a bunch of these shows and he has kind of a basic story structure and I'll kind of go into it, right? I'll just list them all off. Number one, a character is in a zone of comfort. Number two, they want, but they want something. Number three, they enter an unfamiliar situation. Four, they adapt to it. Five, they get what they wanted. Six, they pay a heavy price for it. Seven, they return to a familiar situation. Eight, have changed. So, 
the whole idea behind the structure is that you can use this for every good story. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's a romance, action film, comedy. All these pretty much fall under these stories. They're, I haven't really... Me, personally, I, I can't even think of an exception to this rule. Uh, but I like to, you know, in college, me and my roommate, we kind of had a very similar idea, and I didn't even realize how in tune it was with this. And so when talking about trilogies, the Dan Harmon storytelling is a lot more specific than the kind of our version that we came up with. But it's simple, and, you, and if you ever see a trilogy or if you ever see a series, like a TV series or something, this could kind of work, a book series. And so it's the concept of Rise, Reckoning, and Redemption. And so Rise is obviously the introduction to the character. This is something that people know. This is something people loved. We get eased into it. And the reckoning is the, is the idea that now they're, putting in, they're put into a challenging situation where they're going to have to make some tough decisions. And this is where we start to get really a lot of character development. And then Redemption, this is after reckoning, which most likely the character loses a lot. And so redemption is their, uh, is their chance to really kind of win everyone over again and show them why they're the protagonist and why we care about this person. It's a pretty easy concept, and it works for Star Wars. It works for Lord of the Rings. It works for, uh, let's see, Hunger Games. And Hunger Games, you would have to, obviously, since there's four movies, it's kind of split over those four. Um it works for, I mean, it works for pretty much anything I, I can think off the top of my head. I don't know, guys. This is just kind of my thoughts on it. Um, I, you know, I, I'm looking forward to a lot of movies this year. I'm looking forward to Civil War. As the time of this recording, I do not or have not seen Civil War, but I do have something planned. Uh, I've been a little bit behind, but uh, I promise you might see something check it out. But guys, thanks for watching. Keep coming back. And I love y'all.